Hello, welcome to lecture 17 of Elec Eng 2 CI5. Um, we'll start in this lecture to discuss the part of the capacitors, which is a capacitor, a capacitor is a very important component in electrical engineering. We use it in many applications, building filters, oscillators. Um, uh, it has many, many applications, and it's very important to understand how it works. Uh, this material is from chapter 6, um, and the following lecture will introduce the inductors which is also a second interesting component we use very often. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see in this lecture uh, the IV characteristics of the capacitor, how are they related together, uh, and the expression for the energy stored in a capacitor. Okay, first we start by defining what's a capacitor. What is a capacitor? Um, a capacitor uh, is really... Um, a conductor is really an insulator. It actually it has two conductors in it. So uh, one conductor, uh, we call it the top conductor here, or the the first conductor. This is like this is this is one example of a capacitor. This is like metal sheet. It's like a sheet made of a good metal or a good conductor, a material that can conduct current very well. And there is another bottom sheet, but it's not shown here. Okay. Uh, it doesn't show because there is in between them there is this insulating material which has um, a dielectric constant we call it epsilon r. Epsilon r is a is a property of matter. Um, it's permittivity of matter, and this uh, permittivity, as you will know when you study electromagnetics, it determines the value of the capacitance. But it's, a, it's simply an insulator. It's a material. The material here in between is a material that does not allow the current to go through. It's an insulator, insul insulator material, okay? Uh, so this is one way of having a capacitor, a top conducting blade, bottom conducting blade, and between them there is a dielectric or an insulator sandwiched between them. Another way of building it is what we call a cylindrical capacitor. You have an external uh, cylinder. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a hollow cylinder, okay? So this made also of a conductor. And then you have the internal, the internal cylinder. Uh, this one may be like a solid conductor. This is a solid one. This is not hollow. Okay. And in the volume between them, in the cylindrical volume between them, there is a, an insulator with a material property epsilon r. It's called relative permittivity. So this is a cylindrical capacitor. You can as well have something called um, uh, a spherical capacitor. A spherical capacitor, this you're going to learn in your... Uh, Electromagnetic courses. It con it consists of an inner sphere, and then an outer spherical shell. Okay, and the, in between them there is an insulator. All these are they are all the same. There is they have exactly the same, um, uh, pretty much the same theory. Uh, an inner conductor, an inner conductor, an outer conductor, and the in between there is an insulator. Inner conductor, outer conductor, in between there is an insulator, and the same thing is happening for the barrel blade one. Okay, so this is how this, uh, how the capacitor uh, looks like physically. Uh, so when you buy a capacitor inside, this is how it looks like. Okay, so this is really the structure of the capacitor. How does the capacitor works? work? Uh, first, if you connect a battery to a capacitor like this one, what's going to happen is that the, the battery will deposit some of its positive charges on one of the two conducting electrodes. So you have here a charge called Q. You can call this one Q. Okay, this is a charge Q here, accumulated on the positive uh, electrode. And, um, and this charge will create an electric field. You will learn more about this in your electromagnetic courses. This electric field will create corresponding negative charges on the other plate. So if this is Q, this is minus Q, okay? And uh, the, the rate of a change, if you, if, as you know, maybe if you're study in uh, before in chapter 1, that uh, you get a current flowing I is equal to dQ by dt, okay? So if the charge on the top plate is changing, if the, if the voltage is changing here, then this will result in a change in the, in the positive charge on the top electrode. This will result in a change in the electric field, will result in a change in the negative charge in the bottom of the electrode, and this will result in a current flowing out. So it's very important to understand one, one fact about, um, about an, um, uh, a capacitor. There is a current, the current flowing in is due 
to flow of electrons. So there are electrons moving here due to the electric field, okay? But the current flowing here inside is not due to the flow of electrons. It's due to the rate of change of the electric field. The electric field is, is, is the one that creates this change in the negative charge on the other side. And this negative change in the electric charges is what creates the current. And the current will continue and the circuit closes. So there will be a current flowing here out as, as we know. So, um, so it's very important to understand that. that in, in, the, in, the, in this wire, you have electrons flowing in, or charges in general flowing in. You have charges flowing out, but in the volume of the capacitor, because this one is an insulator, there aren't any electrons flowing here. Okay? The charge, if you have a change, a change in the charge Q here, the electric field is the one that will create a change in the charge here, and this, this change of the charge what creates the current in the rest of the circuit. Now, the capacitor, there is a fundamental relationship relating the, um, the charge stored in the capacitor and the voltage across the capacitor, which is that Q is equal to CV. They are linearly related together. So uh, we call this one a linear capacitor. A linear capacitor has the relationship Q is equal to CV, meaning that the charge stored in the positive electrode okay, is linearly proportional to the voltage and the constant of proportionality is this constant C, which we call it the capacitance. And this number here is, is, is dependent on the shape of the capacitor, the insulating material uh, in bet between the two electrodes and so on. So one of two fundamental relationships, actually three fundamental relationships we have to use in, ca in the ca dealing with capacitors is the relationship Q is equal to CV. The charge in the positive electrode is related to the voltage across the two terminals of the capacitor uh, by the constant of proportionality C. This is a linear capacitor. Why is it a linear capacitor? Because the voltage is zero, the charge will be zero. If the voltage increases, the charge will also increase, and the relationship between them is linear. There is something called nonlinear capacitor. So you can have um, Q is given by any nonlinear relationships, such as e to the minus v, or something like that. But this one is a linear one. This is the capacitance. It has units of farad. Okay, the units of capacitance is farad. Okay, and one farad from this one is one column per one volt. Okay, so we say that the capacitance of a capacitor is one farad if it stores a charge of one column when you apply a voltage of one volt across it. Okay, Usually, one, co one column is such a huge charge, such a huge charge. Usually, the capacitance values are small. They are from B, through picofarads, 10 to the minus 12, to few thousands of microfarads. So, uh, tens of minus 3, uh, tens of power minus 3. So, uh, 10 to the minus 12, 10 to the minus 3, these are the practical values for, for capacitors. Okay, let's see an example here. We have um, a capacitor. It accumulated a charge of 600 microcoulomb. And when they say it accumulated 600 microcoulomb, they say it accumulated it on the positive electrode. So there is a charge of minus 600 microcoulomb on the negative electrode. Uh, when you put a 5 volts across it, okay, so the voltage across 5 volts. So we know the voltage across 5 volts, know that we know the charge stored. We like to know the value of the capacitance. Well, the solution is just one line. Q is equal to CV. I know the total charge uh, stored or accumulated on the positive electrode with a positive conductor. It's 600 microcoulomb, 610 to the minus 6. I know the voltage across the capacitor is 5 volts. Then use this relationship to get C. You divide this one by this one, you get 120 microfarad. And micro is 10 to the minus 6. So this is the value of the capacitance for this example. Very simple example. So this one first relationship Q is equal to CV. Now, when we use capacitors in circuits, we have to use a circuit model for them. If you remember when we dealt with resistors, we use this symbol for a resistor. And we agreed that if you have a voltage drop positive, negative across the resistor, and we are the ones who define this drop. Then we say the current is positive if it's flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So we call, I call this one VR, the voltage across the resistor, and this one here is IR, the current across the resistor. And by the way, these two can be 
time varying. We dealt so far in the, co in the course with DC examples. Everything is constant with time. But this, but this does not really have to be the case because you can have as well uh, a case where you have um, uh, the voltage can be sinusoidal in time and the current will follow it. The current will also be sinusoidal in time, okay? But with a different value, okay? And the ratio between these two is simply equal to the resistance that we have. So if this is V, this is a waveform of V of T, this is time here, this is time, okay? This is V as a function of time, this is going to be I as a function of time, but this for a resistor. For a capacitor, situation is a little bit different because, as you will know, the capacitor current and the capacitor voltage do not follow one another, okay? And I will show you the expression to, 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 uh, to handle that. But just, this is, this is the circuit symbol. For now, keep, keep in mind, this is a circuit symbol used for a capacitor. It, this is the top electrode. This, is, this one represents the first metallic electrode. This is the second metallic electrode, and it, this area in between represents the insulator, okay? Uh, we usually give it some polarity between the, we say, the voltage VC will be positive if, if this terminal is higher than this one. And then we say that the current is positive, it's, it's flowing inside the capacitor from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So this definition is very similar to what we have for the resistors, okay? The capacitor, as I will show you, can store a charge and can release charge. So when storing charge, the current will be positive. When it's releasing the charge, the current actually reverse direction and it will flow in the other direction and the current will be negative. Okay? So, but this is really the notation we use for the, uh, or the, the circuit model we use for the capacitor and the, the way we define the, the current and the voltage inside a capacitor. Okay, now we move to the, this interesting part of how we relate the voltage and current inside the capacitor. We know that for a resistor V is equal to IR, or I is equal to V over R, okay? How do we relate the current and the voltage inside the capacitor? Well, we have to go back to first principles. Uh, we have the capacitor here. This is a capacitor, okay? This is C here. If you, if you, change, if you change the voltage across it, so this one becomes V of T, you connect it to some very time varying source, a current will be flowing. This current is I of T. What is the relation between them? Remember, when this current is flowing into the capacitor, it's accumulating a charge on, the, on, the, on this electrode, and there will be a charge of the opposite polarity accumulated in this electrode, okay? But the current is the rate of change of the charge, and the charge is linearly proportional to the voltage. So what you have to say here, the current going through the capacitor is the rate of change of the charge on the, on, in the capacitor, okay? dq by dt. But q is equal to cv. c, which is the capacitance, and v is the voltage between the two terminals of the capacitor. Positive, negative. We usually give it, give it a polarity, say this one positive, this one, then the current will be positive this way. Or we end up with this interesting relationship that all electrical engineers know by heart, that the capacitor current is the derivative of the capacitor voltage multiplying the capacitance. So now the relationship between them is not like that in the resist resistance case. Resistance V is equal to IR. They follow one another. While here one of them is the derivative of the other with a scale factor of the, of the capacitance. So the capacitor current is proportional to the rate of change of the voltage and the constant of proportionality is the capacitance itself. So if I know the voltage waveform, I can get the current flowing in by differentiating it and multiplying with the capacitance. So now if we know the voltage, we can get the current. But what if we know the current? How can we get the voltage? Well, for the resistive case, we know that I is equal to V over R or V is equal to IR. Here how we can get it, we go back to the principles we have. If, if the current is the derivative of the voltage, then the voltage will be the integral of the current. So uh, I is equal to CdV by dt. This is valid at any time, okay? Then you multiply both sides by dt, and then you integrate. You integrate from usually from minus infinity to t. Minus infinity means you go back in time to the very beginning where the capacitor did not have any voltage. This, math, this is what really means. I know some of you may feel confused about minus infinity or plus infinity. Minus infinity means go back sufficiently back in time 
where the capacitor did not have any voltage. So the voltage across it was zero. Okay. Now we are integrating both sides. Uh, here the the parameter of the integration when you integrate and you have t in the uh, in the limits, you use another parameter for integration and usually we take it as tau. Okay. So what I did, I integrated now this equation both sides. So this one will be the integral of dv of tau from minus infinity to t. This one over c, the integral from minus infinity to t, i of tau d tau. So I integrated this one, I integrated this one. Now, if you integrate from minus infinity to t, the current, the integration of the current is the charge. Because the, cu the current is the derivative of the charge, then the integration of the current is the charge. So this will give you, this expression here, will give you the total charge accumulated on the capacitor until time t, from minus infinity to time t, okay? So if you divide u of t by c, this will give you the voltage v of t. Now, this one here, if you integrate dv of tau, will give you v of tau. You put upper limit minus lower limit, and you take into account that v of minus infinity is zero, because you assumed we started with zero voltage. You end up with this relationship that you must remember by heart, that the, the voltage across the capacitor is proportional to the integration of the current going through the capacitor. Okay? So V of V across the capacitor, positive, negative, is 1 over C, the integral from minus infinity to T, I of tau, D tau. Notice that this one here, this will give you the charge at any time T. When you integrate the current, you get the charge. So this one here is Q of T. When you divide Q of T by C, you get V of T. Because the relationship between Q and V is Q is equal to CV. Okay? So... The current is the derivative of the voltage, is proportional to the derivative of the voltage, and the voltage is proportional to the derivative to the integral of the current. Okay? This one is a little bit more difficult to calculate than, 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 the, than this one, because this one just requires differentiation, while this one requires a history. You have to know um, the initial conditions shown as I would uh, and so on as I will show you in examples in a second. Okay. Okay, let's start to discuss some examples. We have here um, a capacitor. Um, it's connected to a voltage source. This voltage source is varying sinusoidal use time, very similar to the one we have from our power outlets. It has a frequency of 200 uh, radian per second. Remember, sine omega t. This is omega here. This is radian per second. And its amplitude is 50. We'd like to find the current going through it. This is the easiest part because... If the voltage between here and here is varying with time, so at one moment this terminal may be positive relative to this one, and then when you go to the other side of the sinusoidal, other half of the sinusoidal waveform, this side becomes more negative than this one, okay? So the voltage is changing with time. We'd like to know the current going through it. This voltage of the battery is the same as the capacitor voltage, so we can, we can now do the expression of the differentiation. This is pretty straightforward. I is equal to C dVc by dt. The capacitor value is 50 microfarad, 50 tens to the minus 6. So 50 to the minus 6 multiplied by the derivative of the voltage. The voltage is 50 sine 200t. 50 will go outside to multiply by 50. You get 2500. You multiply by 10 to the minus 6. So you get 2525 10 to the minus 4. The derivative of sine 200t relative to t will give you 200 cosine 200t. When you multiply 200 by 25, you get 5,000. When you get 5,000, you multiply them by 2 to the minus 4, you get 1.5. So, this is very interesting. When the voltage is having a sine waveform, the current will have a cosine waveform. Okay, they don't follow one another, as in the case of the resistors. And in that case, we say that for a capacitor, the current leads. Why does it lead? Because you can see the cosine at zero, it starts with a big value. While the sine, the voltage, does not reach this, va this value until one quarter of a period later. So this means here that the current leads the voltage. We say that the current waveform leads the voltage waveform. Okay? So this is very interesting. They, don't, they are not proportional to another as was the case in, in resistors anymore. This is not the case here. If the voltage is sinusoidal, sine, the current will be a cosine, and the, and the current leads the voltage. Okay, if this was a cosine, 
this is going to be minus sign and the current also will lead the voltage if you try to blow them together see the current leads the voltage okay let's see one more example uh, we have here a more complicated waveform but this is still an easy thing because you are giving the voltage and you want to calculate the current so the voltage across the terminals of the capacitor is changing with time we are putting some sort of a waveform generator across it and would like to calculate the current drawn by the capacitor this voltage is zero for time less than zero it becomes 2t it's linear between t equals zero and two seconds and then it, it starts and t equal to two this becomes four and then starts to decrease at time t equal to two it goes down exponentially to zero it reaches zero at infinity this voltage waveform is applied to a 10 microfarad capacitor and would like to find the current here again, this is the easy part because I know the voltage, I can get the current through differentiation. I is equal to C dVC by dt. The current going through a capacitor is proportional to the rate of a change of the voltage across the capacitor. So before time zero, this is time zero here. Before time zero, there was no voltage. So if you don't have any voltage and the capacitor started from state of zero, there's no current. There is nothing here. At time zero, the voltage starts to increase relative to time from zero up to four volts. So the voltage difference between here and here starts to increase with time. So this point is higher than this one. And this difference in voltage is increasing with time from zero up to four. So how do we, how do we get the relationship? This is the only relationship we have. I is equal to C dVC by dt. The, this one is 2t v is equal to 2t so when you differentiate 2t relative to t you get 2 so the current here is equal to 2c and c is equal to 10 microfarad you multiply it by 2 you get that the current is equal to 20 10 to the minus 6 or 20 microampere so the current flowing in this bar very interesting the current will be constant the current is constant the current does not change with time the current here is is constant it has a flat value and this flat value is 20 microampere okay it's very interesting one of the voltage increasing linearly with time the the uh, the, the volt the current remains constant okay so now we go to the second part in the second part we have to repeat the same steps we have to differentiate this waveform okay relative to time and then you get the expression for the current in this region so let's see how we do that in the next slide so for all time greater than two this is the expression of the voltage 4 e to the minus t minus 2 so it starts from 4 and then it goes down to 0 this is the capacitor value capacitance value here 10 to the 10 microfarad you differentiate by this one e 4 by 10 will give us 40 the derivative of e to the minus t minus 2 will give us a negative sign multiplied e to the minus t minus 2 this is why this became minus 40 e to the minus 6 so at time t equal to 2 this starts with minus 40 microampere and then it goes down and then it goes to zero so you can see the current suddenly at time equal to 2 changed its value from 20 microampere to minus 40 microampere okay because here if you put t equal to 2 this will gives you this will give you 1 if this gives you 1 then this is minus 40 microfarad so it starts from minus 40 microfarad and this exponential goes to zero at infinity so the whole thing will decay with time with, with time okay good so what is happening here um, uh, is that the current is not continuous the current is not continuous the current is discontinuous at this point and it is fine for a capacitor to have a discontinuous current the current can change its direction you can see from 20 it was positive and then so it is flowing this way positive current and then in the next exactly the same instant switch direction it became it became minus 40 this is fine for a capacitor but the voltage across the capacitor has always to remain continuous so you can see you start we went up from four you have to go down from four again okay you cannot simply have a current uh, there's a jump in the voltage here four to two this can't be happening why because if you if you have the voltage not differentiable then the derivative here will give you infinity and if this if this gives you infinity then you need infinite current to do so which is not physical so the voltage across the capacitor is always continuous the current across the capacitor can see jumps like this one 
okay it's very important to remember that when we analyze circuits okay we have one more example but this example is a little bit harder why is it harder because we are giving the current and you want to calculate the voltage uh, the current here is oscillating between 10 micro 10 milliampere to 10 to minus 10 milliampere and it, it this is takes 10 milliseconds 20 milliseconds 30 milliseconds 40 milliseconds and so on so it finishes one complete period every 20 milliseconds so this one period here it's positive is negative square wave with dual polarity we would like to find the voltage this is this is a little bit harder why because i know the current i would like to get the voltage and the voltage as we know is a pro is a proportional to the integral of the current so i have not to do an integration we have to find the area under this waveform and we have to take the initial conditions into account in the same way we do in all integrals so let's see how we're going to do that okay this is the expression that you must always start with the voltage at any time t is 1 over the capacitance the integral from minus infinity to t i tau d tau, d tau. but we're not starting here at time in uh, minus infinity we know that at time zero the voltage is equal to zero this was given to us as an initial condition so what you have to do you have to divide this integral from minus infinity to zero and from zero to t notice that this term here this will give you the charge on the capacitor at time zero okay this is what we call q of zero this is the charge that accumulated on the capacitor from from the very beginning to time zero so this is q of zero if you divide q of zero by the capacitance you get v of zero but we know that the capacitor voltage at the beginning is zero, so this term will cancel out. This term will cancel. Okay? So we end up with this expression that the voltage across the capacitor is 1 over C, the integral from zero to T, I of tau, D tau. And remember, when we do integration relative, you have T in the limits, we have another parameter in the integration. We'll call it here tau. It doesn't matter. It's a redundant parameter. This is the integral parameter. Now, in this part, we are going to do first the integration this part between 0 to 10 milliseconds so this is 10 to the minus 2 so this is between 0 and 10 milliseconds here m here means milli okay 10 milliseconds you can write second as well if you want uh, the the current is equal to 10 to the minus 2 so i'm here i'm integrating 10 to the minus 2 remember 10 milli means 10 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 so uh, if you do this integration if you divide this one by the value of the capacitor you obtain this expression here that this becomes 200t. The integral of 10 to the minus 2 will give you 10 to the minus 2t. Okay? 10 to the minus 2t divided by the value of the capacitance, uh, you get 500, 200t, and t is between 0 and 10 milliseconds. Okay? So what I did, I, this is a constant in the integration. I can take it out. The integral from 0, from zero uh, to t, this actually I should correct this one here. This is the d tau, okay? We agreed it's going to be, it doesn't really make a difference, but uh, I, I usually, it's, it's standard to use a different parameter in the integration. So uh, if you integrate uh, d, uh, from 0 to t d tau, the integral of d tau is going to give you tau, uh, both t as the upper limit, then you get t. 0 will give you 0, so 10 to the minus 2 multiplying, but divided by c will give you 200, and you have here t, this becomes 200 t. So you can see what's going to happen here is that if, if I plot on this same graph, you see that the voltage across the capacitor is increasing linearly with time. Okay? And at time 10 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds means uh, 10 to the minus 2. Okay? So if you put here T equal to 10 to the minus 2, you get 200 by 10 to the minus 2, you get 2. So the voltage will go up to 2 volts here at the end. Okay? So the capacitor has been charging. It's very important to see what is happening. There is a constant current flowing in this direction. It's a positive current, okay? It's flowing in this direction. It's a positive current. Why do I call it a positive current? Because if I take this as the polarity of the capacitance, it's flowing from positive electrode to the negative electrode, okay? And its value is 10 to the minus 2. So what is this current doing? It's accumulating a charge on, on this positive, on this electrode, okay, Q, and the negative charge here. So the charge Q on the electrode is growing with time. Okay, and it as it turns out, if you have a constant current, the ca the capacitor volt the the charge will increase linearly, and the voltage will also increase linearly. Okay, so you can so see they they are not really the other one is not a square wave as well. It's it's a it's going to be actually a different waveform. 
Okay, now we have to move forward. We have to find how the capacitor behaves in this region. What is the voltage in this region? So, again, we'll go back to, to, uh, to uh, first principles. We said uh, we, this is the relationship that we have for this, exp for this problem because at the voltage at time zero is zero. This is why I was able to change the limits from minus infinity to zero as I've shown the first slide. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this one from zero up to 10 milliseconds, so for this part, and then from 10 milliseconds up to T, which is, which is really for this part here. Okay, so I'm doing I'm doing analysis only for this part here. So my target is find the voltage at any time t between 10 milliseconds and 20, 20 milliseconds. This is my target. So in order to do that, I will divide this integral from 0 to t, from 0 up to 10 milliseconds, and from 10 milliseconds to t. This expression here, the integral of the current, and I repeated that before. This one here, because we started with 0 voltage, we started with 0 charge, this will give you the charge at 10 milliseconds. If you divide the charge at 10 milliseconds by the capacitance, you get the voltage at 10 milliseconds, which we calculated. It, 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 remember, we said at, uh, if you put 10 to the minus 2, you get 2. So remember this one at V of 10 milliseconds, this is 2. So this whole term here will give you 2. Why? Because this is this one, this integral, the integral of the current between 0 to 10 milliseconds, will give you the charge at the end of the 10 milliseconds. If you divide the charge at the end of the 10 milliseconds by the capacitance, you get the voltage at 2 milliseconds, which we calculated, which is equal to 2. So now this becomes our expression. The voltage between time 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds is given by this. An initial value of 2 plus 1 over C multiplying the integral from 10 milliseconds, which 10 to the minus 2 to T and then I, I in this region here is negative. It is minus 10 milliampere or minus 10 to the minus 2 dt. Of course, I wrote here as dt, but it, I could keep it as d tau. It doesn't matter. Actually, I can correct as d tau. As long as I understand what I'm doing, this is fine. I, okay, so let's keep it as d tau here. If you do this integral, uh, the, this is a constant. You can take it out. You divide it by c. You get this number here. Uh, the integral of d tau will give you tau, both upper limit will give you t, both lower limit will give you 10 to the minus 2. This is the expression for the voltage uh, over this period of time. You see that when t is equal to 10 to the minus 2, you get 2. So the voltage starts as well from 2. It's very important to see that. In the, in the first period, what we did, we saw that the current is growing linearly and then it reached 2. Okay? In the second period, the current is actually going down. This is this expression here is the expression of a decreasing voltage, okay? So you can see that the current is the voltage is going down and it goes from two up to zero. If you put if you put um, if you put t equal to twenty milliseconds, so this will give you two multiplied by ten to the minus two minus ten to the minus two will give you one multiplied by ten to the minus two. You multiply by two hundred, so you get two minus two will give you zero. So uh, the voltage will go up. From 0 up to 2 in the, in the positive part, it will go down from 2 up to 0 in the second part. Okay? So, uh, and why, why did that happen? Well, because the, uh, the, capacity, the current reversed its direction. The current now is flowing this way. It's flowing this way. It's flowing in the counterclockwise direction. So, what it's doing is actually depositing positive charges on the lower electrode and negative charge on our electrode. So it is removing the charges it accumulated earlier. Okay, and then at the end of the period, because of the symmetry, you will go exactly to zero charge at this moment. When you go to zero charge at the end of the 20 milliseconds, you have zero voltage as well. So you can repeat the same exactly for all the cycles, but it doesn't matter because now this is zero. We know we start from zero again the next cycle. So you can see this how things go. If this is a current, which is square wave, the voltage, and you can see the current is discontinuous. Here is discontinuous. It goes from 10 milliampere to minus 10 milliampere. So it was flowing in this direction. It was a constant value. And then suddenly it reverses the direction. It became flowing in this direction. Okay? The voltage will go up from 0 up to 2, and then go down from 2 up to 0. And then it will go up again from 0 up to 2. If you repeat the same steps again, and so on. What we get out from that, the voltage has to be continuous. You can see... 
You went up to two, you must go down from two. You cannot go down from one. Okay, because this means you have you you would you uh, you spent infinite energy to do that. So a capacitor voltage has to be continuous. And if you start to if you want to change the capacitor voltage instantaneously, you can start a fire. And this is something we're gonna discuss later uh, when, we, when we talk about an actual circuit. Um, the capacitor has had, must have a circuit that smoothly charges it up, smoothly dis discharges it. And now you stay end from zero, you're gonna charge again from zero up to two and so on. Okay, the last thing I would like to talk about in this lecture is power and energy. We know that for any, any device, the power delivered, it's for any, it's actually for, we did that for resistors, and the same applies for inductors and capacitors. The power delivered to a capacitor is the voltage across the capacitor multiplied by the current across the capacitor. This is the instantaneous power. We call this the instantaneous power. This is varying with time, because this can be a function of time, this can be a function of time. But what is the current? It is proportional to the derivative of the voltage. So now what I'm going to be doing, I will, I will integrate in order to get the energy delivered. I will integrate the power from minus infinity from the very beginning to the time where we are considering. Energy is the integral of the power. So uh, I'm going to take C out. I'm going to write this one as V of tau. I'm going to write this one as dV of tau by d tau. And I'm going to integrate this one relative to parameter tau, which is the integration parameter. So you can cancel this one with this one. And this becomes V of tau dV of tau. Um, there is another way of doing it, but it doesn't matter. This is how you do it. Uh, and the integral of V of tau dV of tau will give you one half V of tau squared. And if you put T to minus infinity, we agreed that we started from minus infinity, the voltage was zero. So V of minus infinity of zero, so this will disappear. You put the upper limit, you get this expression. This expression, all electrical engineers also know by heart, and they use it very often, that the energy stored in the capacitor is equal to one half the value of the capacitance multiplied by the voltage squared of the capacitor. And this can be a function of time. If the voltage is changing with time, the energy stored is changing with time. Where does this energy go? This energy is stored in the electric field in the capacitor. This has to be very clear, and we discuss this in more detail in electromagnetics. There is, there is, as we agreed, there is an electric field, and this electric field is flowing from positive charges to negative charges. This electric field is what stores this energy. Okay, so the energy that you deliver to the capacitor is stored in the electric field inside the insulator of the capacitor. Okay, let's have one example on that. You have um, a capacitor. It has this voltage here, 100. Um, 100. There's a voltage across it. Uh, it's it's 100 uh, sine to 200t. Would like to find the energy stored uh, in the capacitor as a function of time. There's a value of the capacitor. The expression very simple. One half c v c squared. So you square this term. You multiply it by one half c, and this will give you the energy at any time t. So um, so this is one half. The capacitor is 50 microfarad. Uh, we squared the voltage, it was 100, became 10 to the power 4, sine squared. Um, if you multiply all these together, 50 divided by 2, you get uh, 25. You add all the exponents, you get 0.25 sine squared 200t, which you can write it as cosine double the angle and so on. So this would be the expression in joules. Uh, actually, I should, be cor I should correct myself. Uh, this one, this one here is in joules but i took 10 to the minus 3 so the final answer actually should be in millijoules so this one here should be millijoules okay okay so this is fine uh, i want you to understand one thing uh, the energy of the capacitor cannot be negative because if the energy of capacitor is negative this means that the capacitor is giving energy beyond the one that you stored in it okay but what the energy what it does at, at one period, at, at part of the period, it's stowing energy. It, it, um, let, me, let me backtrack for a second. This is the voltage across the capacitor. The black curve is the voltage. But the power, but the energy is, has double the frequency. It's sine squared. So this is a sine, positive, negative, but the energy is sine squared. So it's always positive. So here in this first part, the capacitor is storing energy, and here it's giving it back. It starts from zero energy, it goes back to zero energy. Okay, it's not really a, it does not supply energy beyond the one that is stored in it, and this is why 
the, the minimum of the value are going to get here is zero. Okay, it's very important to understand that. You store energy in the capacitor, you can recover it from the capacitor. But you cannot go to a negative energy, which means that the capacitor is giving you energy beyond what you stored in it. A capacitor is, an, is a passive device, is a passive, comp is a passive component. It does not supply energy on its own. It just stores energy in the electric field and give it back to you again if you if you if you need it. And we'll show you many circuits where we can store energy in capacitors and then put them in loads later. And uh, this is a very active area of research now um, to build the huge capacitors that we can use to store energy for homes and power homes and so on.